Every engineer has a dream. Perhaps it's trying to figure out how to time travel, or maybe building a colony on Mars. But for a production engineer like myself, the dream is about building this perfect factory that can build any car, any model, in any sequence at any one time. But no one has been able to build this perfect factory until one company finally came up with a solution to create the world's most agile and the flexible manufacturing system. Who is that? Mazda. Hello everyone, it's David from Automotive Press. As you may or may not know, I was born and raised in Japan and worked for a number of Japanese car companies, especially in the area of manufacturing and production quality control. So I'm pretty finicky when it comes to uh, inspecting and examining the manufacturing quality of cars and trucks. And there are only two brands from Japan that I truly respect when it comes to their ability to build some of the best cars in the world. One is obviously Toyota, as you know, they have a great Toyota production system that builds perhaps best cars in the world. But the other brand might surprise you and that is Mazda. From my perspective, because Mazda is a smaller, more of a niche producer, they have to work harder to produce many different models and trims inside a smaller factory, unlike Toyota, which can build the same model for many, many quantities in the same factory. So from a perspective of an engineer, looking at the manufacturing and production system, I actually think Mazda has the best manufacturing capability, advanced technique, and knowledge and insight in the world. I am really fortunate to have exclusive access to Mazda's Hofu factory in Japan, and I'm going to take you right into the factory and show you why, from my perspective, they build some of the best cars in the world. So let's go. So I'm going to explain this by using the old fashioned way, using the whiteboard and the marker. And why do I believe that the Mazda's production system is best in the world? And it is the most agile and flexible system that I've ever come across. Well, it's a very simple matter. In the case of Toyota, things are a little bit easier because they have a very high volume production. So they can produce similar product in the same factory. So let's say you take a Tahara factory, for example, where um, Toyota 4Runner, Land Cruiser Prado, and also Lexus GX all produce an exact same line because they share basically the same platform and they're more or less same vehicle with some differences in terms of uh, design and body style but they're produced in the same line. In fact, Toyota can even deviate from uh, some of those basic uh, profile and produce a sedan, a crossover, or maybe even two-door version. As long as the basic chassis and the platform underneath are shared among them, they can be produced in the same line. However, it gets a lot trickier if car companies want to produce a very different size, different configuration, and different types of model on the same line. So even for mighty Toyota, they will not try to produce a car, a full-size SUV, and let's say a sports car in the exact same line inside the same factory because engineering-wise and technically speaking, it is almost impossible to do that without costing a huge amount of money. That's why if the model or the actual car is very different in size or shape, they will produce in different factories. And once again, Toyota can do that because they have many, many factories in not just in Japan, but around the world. And so factory A, B, and C can be configured to produce a particular type of car, truck, or SUV, and they don't have to cross share different models inside the same factory. That was always considered something you just don't do in engineering because it will cost too much money to try to cater to many different models. And that is where the biggest difference is between the Toyota production system and the master production system because Mazda, for the first time, have come up with a way to do exactly what Toyota is not able to do or is not willing to do. And that is to produce completely different type of models in the same factory, but also on the same line. And this is only made possible because of some of the latest technology the Mazda is using, such as AGV, which stands for Automated Guided Vehicles. And what it does is that AGVs will actually move apart in terms of front section and the rear section so that the front section can, let's say, carry engine and the rear one can carry the rear axle and they can move forward and backward to accommodate different sizes of vehicle, allowing Mazda for the first time in the very near future to be able to produce a sedan, a large crossover or SUV, or even a sports car that do not share platform with any of those vehicles I mentioned on the exact same line. This kind of a very agile and flexible production system do not exist 
anywhere else in the world as far as I know. And I have visited, worked with, or seen more than 1,000 different types of factories around the world. So I should know which factories are agile and which ones are not. So Mazda, which actually currently only have two major factories in Japan, one in Hiroshima near the head office, and one in Hofu about an hour away, which is a factory I went to visit. And what they're trying to do for the future is to be able to produce different types of model, regardless of size or configuration or type of model it is in these two factories. And the most intriguing part of this is that Mazda is not only trying to produce many different models in the same line, in the same factory, it is also trying to make it cross-shareable or cross-functional between the two factories in Hiroshima and Whole Foods, which means Mazda is trying to achieve 100% flexibility in terms of what can be produced regardless of the size or type of model in either of the factories. So that means for the very first time, they can achieve 100% mixed model production, which is like a utopia or holy grail of production system. And once they get to that point, which isn't too far away, Mazda can adjust the volume up and down based on whichever model is selling well and swap back and forth among the models between the two factories to give customers exactly what they want based on real demand with a very short lead time or very short cycle time. And this will give them tremendous advantage over larger companies like Toyota, who has to basically produce similar models in the same factory. So in the very near future, Mazda will accomplish something that we thought is not possible in the past, which is 100% agility and 100% flexibility. And those are things that really impressed me as I went through Mazda's whole food factory in my recent trip to Japan. So let me take you right into the factory and give you a little bit more insight as to what is happening with Mazda's production system, which I think right now is more agile and flexible than Toyota's production system. So I know this is going to be a little bit hard for you guys to understand, but there is a very important difference between the Mazda production system and even Toyota production system because other manufacturers tend to focus on very large scale production, but they are not as flexible as something like the Mazda system, which is really focused on the ability to switch cars from manufacturers to manufacturers or from plant to plant. So for example, we have um, the uh, Hiroshima factory as well as H1 factory and H2 factory in Whole Foods and they can actually swing laterally or vertically to bring the car back and forth between the factory. This is something that is unique to Mazda and that is difficult to achieve by other companies because they don't have that much flexibility. So as an example, CX-5 was originally produced in the main factory in Hiroshima and it was brought over to the H2 factory right here. But as the CX-60 production began to pick up and the volume increased, they decided that they need an extra volume for the CX-50. So they moved the CX-5 back to the main factory so that there is more room for growth for the CX-60 plant production right here in H2. And those are the flexibility that most companies cannot achieve, but Mazda has been able to engineer a system that allows for lateral swing as well as a vertical swing so that there's a complete flexibility to produce whatever you want in any quantities. And that is a signature part of Mazda that I believe no one else is doing anywhere else in the world. So this is the brief outline of the assembly section of H2. Now, the entire factory here is pretty big. More than 3,000 people work here. But in this particular section, we have the H2 assembly line specifically to produce the CX-60 and Mazda 6. Now, neither of those are produced, uh, produced for the purpose of North American distribution right now. But there will be other models that will come into play here, which will be sold in North America. So those are something we can look forward to. Um, the total area is 45,000 square meters, and attack time is 1.8 minutes per car. That means every 1.8 minutes, a brand new car comes off the assembly line. That's what we call the attack time, or that's what we call the rhythm of the production. And um, the total volume output is uh, 138,000 for the year, based on two shifts. And there's uh, about 384 people working just in this section alone. So this is getting a little bit technical, but if you love manufacturing production stuff, you're going to love this. And this is the old layout versus a new layout. And the biggest difference is not so much the flow, 
but the equipment behind it. So in the old system, because everything is chained together, there's only so much you can do in terms of uh, providing flexibility. But in the new system, we're, they're using what we call power and free, which allow for each of the models to have freedom in terms of movement. And that's why they're able to increase or decrease volume and have the flexibility. So that's a new layout, new method that brings a type of flexibility that's not seen elsewhere. And here's a brief uh, uh, view of where we're going to be going through in terms of plant. We'll be walking around quite a bit, but in terms of what we can show you, it's going to be the engine marriage or engine assembly, which is mating together with the body, and then the battery installation, and then also the final uh, quality control. So we're going to be able to see those things, and I will be taking some video clips to show you as well. So this is a very interesting and fascinating area of the production because this is a state-of-the-art system using uh, automatic guided vehicles, or AGVs for short. And the reason why it's so critical using this way is to provide complete flexibility. In the old days, we had a conveyor belt, and so if you have a smaller car or a bigger car, uh, they have to use different fixtures to in in install the engine and the transmission. But what happens here is that these AGVs are literally dance partners. And you can see, for example, there's a front section, there's a front section, and then there is a rear section. The two have to be uh, talking to each other. There's a sensor that allows them to talk to each other, and the front section goes with the front of the car, obviously. The rear section goes to the back of the car, but they move in tandem together, and it's installed onto the correct car. So this is an uh, extremely interesting and uh, state of our system. As you can see, the AGVs are moving literally on its own with no interference directly from my human operators, and they are automatically spacing apart from each other the right amount of distance until it's ready to be installed on the car. And as a car moves one piece at a time, the, um, both the front area and the rear part of the trains are installed onto the car. Now, if there is additional cars produced in the future, and there will be additional cars in the future, and therefore the wheelbase or the size of the car is different, it's not a problem because AGVs will be designed automatically to have a different distance from the current one to accommodate different models on the same line. My kudos to Mazda for coming up with something that will allow different models to be produced at different volume and still provide the fastest turnaround in terms of future changes because the system is completely flexible. In addition to the, uh, these AGVs that can move on its own, if you look carefully, there is a section of the AGV that is blue in color. And the blue color is called a uh, fixturing or jig or short. And those ones are holding the powertrain in place. But should the powertrain change, then all you have to do is change the fixture, the blue section right there. If you change that, then whatever that goes on top can be different and you can still use the same AGV to do the same installation. So we are now at the end of the master production line here, and I had a full review of the entire production system, which is extremely impressive, and you can tell the quality of the paint, the assembly, the body finish is absolutely world-class as we begin to end this production area. And they're doing the final check here to make sure there's nothing that can go wrong. And um, what they're doing is to actually check for all the defects. And some of the stuff are checked earlier. For example, the paint check is done earlier. And should they find anything at all, it's either corrected right away or even taken offline if it's something that requires a little bit more of a repair. But there is not a single model that will pass this area that will go to the customer site uh, that has defects. So all the defects has to be removed, corrected, repaired. And, and it has to be in the perfect condition for it to be shipped from this factory. And that's the promise that Mazda has, and uh, which is why, uh, even though it may not be apparent to many of you guys, I think Mazda makes some of the best quality car in the world. And you can tell from looking at this factory and walking around that uh, their dedication and commitment to quality is second to none. So I hope that uh, helped you learn a little bit more about the Mazda production system because I really think this is one area that is underappreciated and not understood by general consumers in terms of how much effort, time, and resources Mazda has placed 
in making sure that every single car is perfect. As I reflect on my trip to Mazda in Japan, I came away honored and thankful for the opportunity to understand their production system, but also realized that there's so much more to it than what I can show you today. We barely scratched the surface of what they are doing to make the future of production truly amazing. I hope you learned something important and significant from my video today. If you did, I would appreciate it if you can give me a thumbs up, make some comments, and subscribe if you haven't done so. But until next video, I'm signing off for now. Thank you so much.